Hi, I'm Peter Chan, National Weather Service Program Lead of the Alaska Weather Show, and I have a very important change notice to share with you. The last TV broadcast of the Alaska Weather Show in the traditional sense over the airwaves will be on Saturday, June 30th. Starting on July 1st and thereafter, the National Weather Service will provide a modified web-based version of the program on a new YouTube channel. So that means you'll be able to find us. We'll be moving from at AKWX TV to at NWS Alaska, and you can go ahead and subscribe to that uh, channel now. There will be a public comment period from May 15th through July 30th, so please send your comments or concerns to nws.service-changecomments at noaa.gov. And if you have any other questions, you may reach carrie.hazley at noaa.gov and donald.moore at noaa.gov. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Hello again, and thanks for joining us for this Saturday show. Up first, hazardous weather graphic. There are no uh, advisories, watches, or warnings out anywhere around the state. The uh, flood advisories that were out are all ended now, and uh, looking really good here for the next couple of days. <clears throat> Even out to the west, although some gale warnings will be coming in to the Aleutians uh, tomorrow and uh, to a lesser extent on Monday. Otherwise, moving on to the uh, <clears throat> Breakup map, you can see all the rivers south of the Brooks Range now open, completely open. And uh, <clears throat> up here for the uh, Sagwan, some open areas, the entire stretch, same thing for the Kaparik River, some areas of open uh, water there. And a good stretch on the Colville of mostly open water with some uh, ice on the upper reaches and then out toward the coast. And then a little bit of ice here on the uh, Kaparik River. I'm sorry, the Kobuk River here, <clears throat> due to the chilly temperatures that have been persisting there over the Kotzebue Sound, northwest part of the state area for the last several days. Uh, so another breakup season come to an end. Moving on to satellite imagery, band of clouds here with some showers, kind of exiting the northern panhandle today, some more moisture, low persistent, really slow moving, easterly moving low here bringing some uh, showers into the southern panel. Nothing heavy, just keeping it kind of cloudy and cool with uh, showery conditions there. Uh, a little bit of a break here over the Copper River Basin with some sun breaks extended up into the eastern interior, allowing temperatures to get into the uh, mid to upper 60s and pushing 70 in some areas like over toward Eagle there. And a lot of clouds here, a couple of systems, one down here to the south, you can see band of moisture right here coming northeastward. And then this low here, tracking eastward, trying to push a front southeastward, beginning uh, block. So most of it's going eastward into the interior with some light precipitation there. Heaviest amounts, only about maybe 10 to 1,500 hundredths of an inch with most other areas seeing less. Weak trailing front down across uh, the Yukon Delta into Nunavik Island. And a little bit more moisture here into the eastern Aleutians. And then out to the west, the next front, this one will be much stronger coming in. Actually, not so much this one here will dissipate and uh, move eastward. And then tonight, a stronger one will come in, as we'll see in a few minutes here. Uh, but first on the analysis today, there's a weak front out there now coming eastward, bringing some rain into the western Aleutians. Weak low, bringing moisture into the eastern uh, Aleutians there and the Alaska Peninsula with some rain. And uh, wind's not much of a factor with this at all. Areas of rain and showers over the western interior with the more significant amounts up here of this front. But again, even those ranging from one to two tenths at the most there. Some of that mixing with snow again back on along the northwest coast. Of course, Western Brooks Range, higher elevation, seeing snow. And up to the western Arctic coast, those showers taper off and end in the central interior and begin to see some clearing here on the east side with high pressure down over the uh, eastern Gulf of Alaska. But a weak front or a weak trough here keeping uh, showers and moisture in over the panhandle today. For tonight, low pressure continues to weaken and tracks eastward, but still leftover moisture coming in from Canada there keeps chance of showers there over the southern panhandle beginning to clear out to the north. Uh, stays dry over the eastern interior south of the Brooks Range. And this slowly moving, weakening cold front, uh, we'll see some snow showers behind it, a mix along it, not much of anything in advance of it. Scattered showers here over the southwest interior into Bristol Bay, continued southeast flow, chance of rain, Kodiak Island, heaviest rainfall amounts along the south coast of the Alaska Peninsula. Some of that will catch the eastern Aleutians, could be a few showers around on Alaska to Nikolsky. Dutch Harbor, winds uh, real light here over the central and eastern Bering Sea. 
and just about all of the states, especially in the area of high pressure in the Gulf of Alaska. And then a stronger front coming in, bringing uh, 40 to 45 knot gale force winds with it into the western Aleutians, beginning to advance eastward late tonight. And we'll see for tomorrow, that pushes into the Adak Atka area. Uh, possible gale force winds, but most likely small craft advisories, winds diminishing behind the front over the western Aleutians as the strongest winds shift up over the western Bering Sea there. And uh, break here, some coloring, but uh, again, that southeast flow keeping uh, clouds and moisture along the Alaska Peninsula, especially the Pacific side. Still some showers around Kodiak Island, southwest interior Yukon, Kuskokwim Delta, up to about the Kuskokwim Mountains there eastward. Just uh, cloudy skies or some partly sunny skies tomorrow, hopefully, with a dry day across much of uh, south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, North Gulf Coast. More chance of sunshine as you head east here and northward. Even the North Slope might see some clearing tomorrow, maybe even the Arctic coast. Still a chance of showers here over the uh, southeast panhandle, maybe all the way up to just east of Juneau. Could see a shower or two in the afternoon there, but that'll be pretty light in all areas. And then for Monday, basically dry for the panhandle, almost a shower activity now into Canada and uh, <clears throat> chance of rain Kodiak Island there on up to the Kenai Peninsula. Scattered showers here along the southwest coast. Partly to mostly sunny over the interior. Seeing warm uh, temperatures rising into the at least the mid-70s here in the mid and upper Tanaw Valley, 40 mile country. Lows tonight, Panhandle 40s. South Central Alaska, 40s. Highs for tomorrow. 65 to 70, Copper River Basin, upper 50s, lower 60s. Susitna, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage. And uh, upper 60s there around Skagway and Haines, otherwise in the 50s for the Panhandle. Near 50 for Kodiak Island, otherwise 50s everywhere else. Lows in the 40s again everywhere, even the southeast coast. Followed by highs, lower 70s there in the Copper River Basin. And uh, upper 60s, lower 70s to sit in the valley down into uh, Big Lake area, Wasilla. And in the 60s on the Kenai Peninsula, mid 60s for the Cuscoom Valley, near 50 for Kodiak Island. Up to the north, uh, lows in the 40s, central interior, 20s for the Arctic coast and out to the Seward Peninsula, followed by highs tomorrow, 65 to 70 from Fairbanks eastward to the border and cooling off into the 30s and lower 40s out toward the Bering Strait. Same thing for the uh, Arctic coast. North Slope starting to warm up a little, looks like 40s, lower 50s there. And then uh, lows in the 40s. 30s now, so warming up even the lows all the way out to the Arctic coast. Highs, 70 to 75, eastern interior, mid to upper 60s there, as far west as uh, possibly uh, Ambler and Galena, otherwise a 60 for uh, Kobuk, and then out to the southwest coast, lows tonight, 35 to 40, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs 45 to 50, most places, and followed by lows, again, 30s to lower 40s, and highs in the 40s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For Sunday morning, starting out here in the west, uh, IFR way out there from about, um, let's see, Amchitka Island out to uh, Shimiana too. Marginal VFR covering much of the remainder of the Bering Sea right into the southwest coast, up in across Norton Sound to the Bering Strait or just south of the Bering Strait, some IFR possible for St. Lawrence Island. And the North Slope, pretty good VFR. East side there, some IFR that extends down into the northern Koyukuk Valley. And then some marginal VFR on down to the lower Yukon Valley, narrow band there. VFR to the east and to the south, cross Copper River Basin. Some uh, marginal VFR, <clears throat> south central Alaska, especially the central western Alaska range and Talkeetna's. IFR up in the western Prince William Sound and the coast of the Kenai Peninsula. And also, uh, Sitkanak Island and the south coast of the Alaska Peninsula. Panhandle, pretty much VFR, a little bit of lower conditions there, misty fjords over towards Stewart. <coughs> Excuse me. And for uh, Sunday, so some marginal VFR over the eastern and southeast Panhandle, good VFR up to the North Gulf Coast, mostly VFR interior Alaska and uh, Kodiak Island IFR on up to just south of Resurrection Bay. Patch of IFR here, southern Nunavak Island on down to, well, well east of the Permaloffs. And then that band of IFR with the uh, next front pushing eastward, coming into the central Aleutians, starting to enclose or, or 
sweep over Atka Island, otherwise Marjo VFR. And uh, North Slope, part of the coast, Chuck CC looking good, VFR flying there. And for Monday morning, some Marjo VFR along the Brooks Range. Otherwise, good VFR for the Arctic Coast, North Slope, and much of interior Alaska here, all the way down to the southwest coast, Seward Peninsula, mostly VFR. Marshall VFR out over the uh, Bering Sea and that narrowing band weakening front here. Uh, moving into Unalaska, or Unamak Island, marginal VFR for Unalaska Island, and then lots of marginal VFR out to the west there. And this area of IFR still along the south coast of the Alaska Peninsula, up uh, pushing in a little more over Kodiak Island, especially on the east side there, Fognak Island, and the Barrens into Kamishak Bay, and staying south of the North Gulf Coast and pushing in, looks like uh, IFR spreading into the uh, southern pan central pan on Monday morning. And for the afternoon, that kind of dissipates out, looking at some VFR with marginal VFR over the inside waters and along the coast. Good VFR, interior Alaska, lower conditions of the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, again, Resurrection Bay, Southern Cook Inlet, and then IFR, mostly on the east side of Kodiak Island, and again, south of the Alaska Peninsula, and some IFR now showing up over the northern Bering Sea. For passes, Anatovic IFR becoming VFR, and that goes for Radigan as well, improving throughout the day to VFR flying. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, marginal to VFR for rainy, otherwise windy, Isabel, Mentasta, all looking really good tomorrow. VFR for Tanita as well. Portage VFR, <clears throat> Chilkoot and White VFR. Freezing levels, about uh, 4,000 feet here through the central interior, cooler back to the west, 2,000 feet, two to 3,000 feet through here and uh, 2,000 feet uh, to the north, about four to 6,000 feet over the panhandle. Icing, uh, possible mixed icing here over the uh, panhandle, mostly southeastern panhandle, southern areas, and also possible for Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, some moisture coming up from the southeast, and that front pushing a zone of possibly considerable moderate rime icing into uh, Adak Island there, eventually sliding eastward tomorrow evening and overnight into Atka. And the jet stream, westerlies up here in the north, 33,000 feet, only about 65 knots so across the north slope. Main jet core here, just south of the Aleutians, northwest 75 to uh, 90 knots there into uh, the eastern Aleutian areas. And light for the panhandle, and at 3,000 or 9,000 feet, high pressure makes for light wind conditions, Gulf of Alaska, southeast interior, northern Bering Sea, Southeast 45 there, crossed uh, northeast Bristol Bay and Kamishak Bay, 40 knotters there off the south coast of the Panhandle, 3,000 feet, 45 knot northwest winds for the Panhandle, southeast 40 knots and across the southwest interior and turbulence, areas of uh, isolated moderate Kodiak Island all the way up to the Western Brooks Range. Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on Earth, growing up to seven feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. These sea turtles are among the most highly migratory animals on Earth, some traveling up to 10,000 miles a year between their nesting and feeding grounds. Prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, the species overall is declining, more so in the Pacific. In the Eastern Pacific, the Mexican population was once thought to be the largest in the world and has experienced an alarming decline. This trajectory of decline that we've seen and actually collapse, we're talking about only 20 or 30 turtles nesting every year where thousands used to just 40 years ago. That's the kind of dramatic decline. The Western Pacific population has been declining steadily and it's particularly critical to act now before it collapses while there are enough turtles in nests to respond to conservation measures. But threats to all leatherbacks in the Pacific need to be addressed. The top threats to populations are uncontrolled coastal development, all the bad stuff on the nesting beaches, egg harvest, poaching of the females. 
predation on the eggs by dogs and pigs. A deforestation makes the sand too warm and dry for the and the eggs don't hatch. So another one is incidental capture in fishing gear. During their vast migrations, they get caught in fishing gear throughout the Pacific. And finally, marine debris, which the leatherbacks mistake for their favorite food, jellyfish, and they choke on those. Protecting leatherbacks in U.S. waters alone is not enough to ensure the continued existence of the species. The highly migratory nature of Pacific leatherbacks requires cooperation and international collaboration. NOAA is focusing on partnerships with Mexico, Central America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Our action plan promotes a holistic recovery strategy that addresses all the sources of mortality. So that's basically ensuring that the remaining nesting sites are protected and the nests produce as many hatchlings as possible. And then secondly, in tandem with that, is reducing the fisheries related mortalities. We're working with international partners to incentivize co community participation on the nesting beach conservation and developing alternative livelihood programs that wean communities off leatherback resources and introduce alternative methods for food and income. Recovery is going to take a long time, on the order of 20 to 30 years at least, before we see some of these actions bear fruit. But here in the U.S., we can all help leatherbacks by making seafood choices, for instance, that support sustainable fishing practices. And beachgoers can certainly do their part by keeping our oceans clean of plastic debris, picking up marine litter, particularly plastic bags. Together with our partners, we are strengthening protection and conservation efforts to ensure a future for leatherbacks, helping them to survive and once again thrive in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. NOAA scientists have been collecting data and piecing together the story of the gray whale. Each year, new discoveries are made, revealing the secrets of this ancient traveler. With the northeastern Pacific population recovered, leading scientists from the NOAA Southwest Fisheries Science Center continue their research efforts to help save the western population from extinction. The most effective way to identify individuals and count the population is to photograph them from the surface. Using the gray whale's distinctive markings and gray spots caused by parasites on their skin, scientists document these characteristics to identify individuals. So we're able to track migratory pathways and corridors by the simple use of photo identification. There are other ways to do that as well, biopsy sampling and genetics. And from the air. Aerial photography is one way you can study animals based on their size and shape. So you can learn a lot about nutritive and reproductive condition of whales just by measuring their size and shape from vertical aerial photographs. You can also put satellite transmitters on them and track them remotely. You put the transmitter on and let them go and you watch them move across the Pacific or down to China or wherever it might be. To further learn and discover where these great sojourners swim, the team of researchers traveled to Russia and set up camp on Sakhalin Island. The main focus of our research uh, while we were on Sakhalin was to collect photo identification. If it was a whale that we had not collected a genetic sample from previously, we would also attempt to collect a sample from the whales. Whereas whales are endowed with natural insulation, their human observers must gear up to brave the cold in order to study these marine giants up close. 
we're typically only able to work about one third of the time that we're there. And that's mostly due to this fog that just invades the area and sits sometimes for weeks on end. So it can be very challenging to try and do field work in this site. Recently, two whales from the Western population surprised scientists by migrating across the Pacific to the waters of California and Mexico. It's a really fun finding. It's added another piece to the puzzle that we didn't previously know about. And I would have to say that it's opened up more questions than we had before. Research scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States share images of animals they've spotted. We take a photograph of an individual off of Sakhalin Island, and we get a phone call from Japanese scientists, and they say, hey, guess what? We've got a picture of a gray whale in Japan. We say, can you send it to us? We'd love to try and match it. They'll send us the picture, we'll compare it to our catalog, and we'll say, hey, we've got a match from Sakhalin to Japan. Unlike many species of whales that still remain on the endangered species list, the Eastern Pacific gray whale, once on the brink of extinction, now numbers about 20,000 individuals. Recovery efforts that started 40 years ago and the ongoing research and monitoring by NOAA scientists have contributed to the conservation of the gray whales. Together with legal protection and public education, scientists are playing their part to ensure the survival of this magnificent migratory animal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And the uh, marine forecast here for the south coast, east winds at about 10 knots. Central coast westerlies, 15 to 20 knots. And the north coast, west-northwest winds, 15 knots, seas four feet. And for Stevens Passage, right there, south winds at 15 knots, seas three feet. Link Canal, south winds 15 knots, seas three feet. And Clarence Strait, south winds at 15 knots with three foot seas. And for Monday, out here along the uh, central and south coast, south winds, 15 knots, five to six foot seas, and uh, 15 to 25 knot east to southeast winds for the north coast with seas as high as 11 feet. And uh, light winds over the inner channels here, south at 10 for Lynn Canal and Stevens Passage, light west breeze at 10 knots for Clarence Strait. Prince William Sound, variable winds, 10 knots, seas two feet. Eastern North Gulf Coast, east winds, or west winds at 20 knots. Middleton Island, variable winds, 15 knots. And uh, Western North Gulf Coast, wet, east winds at 15 knots. Small craft advisories for the Barren Islands in Kamishak Bay for uh, east winds at about uh, 25 knots or so. And uh, southeast winds, 10 knots for the uh, Southern Cook Inlet area, north winds at 10 knots, or I'm sorry, variable at 10 for Northern Cook Inlet. <clears throat> and for the uh, Monday time frame, Prince William Sound, east winds at 20 knots, southeast winds 25 knots for the Eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, east winds 25 for the Western North Gulf Coast, Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, still a little brisk there. Winds out of the east at 30 knots with 10 foot seas and Cook Inlet now northeast, 15 to 20 knots with four foot seas. And for the uh, Bristol Bay area, east winds, 25 knots for Sunday with uh, the Alaska Peninsula, east southeast, 15 to 20 knots, Kodiak Island, east winds, 25 to 30 knots. And for Monday, Kodiak Island, same forecast. Uh, east winds, 25 to 30, or east to southeast winds, 25 knots. And for the Alaska Peninsula, east southeast winds, 15 to 20 knots. Strongest winds there will be in Bristol Bay, east at 30 knots with four foot seas. And for the eastern Aleutians, east winds, 15 to 20 knots tomorrow. Central Aleutians, southeast at 30 knots. So good small craft advisories there coming in. And uh, gale warnings out to the west, we've got 40 to 45 knots with that incoming front from the uh, south and southeast for tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. And then on Monday, 
Southwest winds 30 to 40 knots for the western Aleutians, seas uh, 18 or 16 to 22 feet. Southwest winds there for the central Aleutians and south winds on average about 20 to 25 knots for the Fox Islands. And for the Bering Sea, east winds 20 to 25 knots. Southwest coast, southeast winds 10 to 20 knots. And Norton Sound, east at 15. And for St. Lawrence Island, southeast winds at 10 knots with two foot seas. Norton Sound on Monday, brisk wind or small craft advisories, ice is gone now there. East winds 25 knots, Yukon Delta Coast, St. Lawrence Island, east winds 15 to 20. 25 knot easterly winds for the Cusquam Delta Coast as well as St. Matthew Island, the Pribloffs, east winds at 20 knots, seas right around six feet. <clears throat> And uh, from Wales to Cape Thompson, east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Otherwise, for the western Arctic coast, uh, west winds 30 knots. Central coast, west winds at 30 knots as well. And southwest at 25 for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Then for Monday, winds swing around to the east here for the uh, eastern coast. They're at about 20 knots. Lighter winds on the central and western coast down to about uh, south to southeast. 10 to 15 knots through this area, and then east-northeast, 10 to 15 there from Wells to Cape Thompson. For tonight, uh, we cold front bringing some moisture in the form of rain or snow into mostly the uh, north-central part of the state up toward Brooks Range out to the Arctic coast, and uh, even some moisture here, rain and snow showers on the trailing edge back across the Yukon Delta, showers over south-central Alaska in the southwest interior, and rain for Kodiak, there's the next storm with the gale force winds pushing into the central Aleutians tomorrow. And kind of wet here for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, but drying out over the interior and temperatures on the upswing. And for Monday, not bad for the panhandle, rain for... These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.